Felix, Felix here, guys. Good evening. Slightly out of breath, ran up the stairs. Uh, good evening here from Hong Kong, and good morning to you. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, why are we doing this live? Well, because we want to address all of this panic and fear and fud and everything around all Chinese stocks, really, no matter what they are. And we're going to really deep dive into the ADR structure, the VIE structure, what they really mean. And I aim to answer, uh, hopefully, most of your questions, guys. So don't be shy. Ask questions, please. As always, guys, this is not neither financial nor legal advice. Uh, so uh, always do your own research and be smart about it. And I will actually, I'm about to upload a full detailed explanation on really the VIE structure and the ADSs and how that all works. A proper detailed uh, deep dive lecture. Uh, and I'll be adding that to the uh, Master Stocks course down below. Because if you guys join it, you get lifetime access to all of the content. And I'll keep adding to that. Uh, my cat here is excited too for you guys to join the um, Stock uh, Master course community. Uh, so check out those coupons. They expire tomorrow, guys. Uh, so Sunday night, they are expiring. And Build Wealth is that coupon. Now, uh, without further ado, um, uh, let me welcome some of you guys here. Uh, James Bond is here. That's always great. <laughs> yeah. uh, Yanis, um, Blake, uh, Andrew, Florida, Orange Juice, and August, etc. Uh, great to have you guys on the call here. Truly appreciate you joining in. Uh, don't be shy. Ask questions. If you are, uh, you can't get into the live chat, you just have to hit the subscribe button, guys. That's the only way to get into it. But there is absolutely no charge for any of this uh, whatsoever. So let me uh, pull up a little bit the sort of structure of what we're going to look at here. Um, so we're going to look at, and I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit how these structures work. And that's uh, both the VIE structure uh, that everyone's sort of bashing about and the media seems to be jumping up and down about because variable interest entity, it does sound spooky, doesn't it? And then we've got ADSs, which are American depository shares. Sounds a little bit less scary with its full name, American depository share. Uh, and that's what we're going to look at. And uh, then, of course, we can take a look at NEO and everything else you guys are interested in. Um, uh, Ken says, looks like 33% of my portfolio will uh, just evaporate any time now. Uh, I, I, very unlikely. That would be, be my summary of it. Uh, August and Wabi Sabi, thank you for liking for the algorithm, guys. It helps me a, a, a tremendous amount. So I think from a kind of headline point of view, what is this all about? Well, what kicked this off? What kicked this off is the Didi situation, right? So we're going to look at what happened to Didi here. And now, is this news? Okay, look at this headline here from CNBC. Alibaba's VIE structure, is it risky? Can you see the date on here? Friday, September 19, 2014. This is when uh, this was news. And even then it wasn't news because it was a 14-year-old structure at the time. So a lot of this is just to create a bit of panic and fear uh, for no particular reason. And I aim to uh, kind of uh, un unpanic you. Uh, that's really what I was, I was hoping to do this. Um, um, you were really hoping to watch uh, cover this after watching Carrie's video. Is Carrie that uh, slightly uh, older gentleman with his books and, and who, who talks, it does very long videos. Is, is, is that the chap? Uh, in, in which case, I have not seen it, but I've seen the headline. Uh, and I've also seen Tom Nash's headline. And Tom, I think you might have pushed a little bit far here uh, th this time. But I understand why he's doing it. Uh, Rabi Sabi says, I'm like your therapist. Yes, except I don't send you bills, right? Uh, this is $500, guys. <laughs> Come back on Tuesday. Um, uh, okay, so... Right, let's let's look at what happened to Didi, and then we look at the actual structure. So Didi listed in, in, in New York. Apparently, if you believe the local media reports here in Hong Kong and in China, the regulator, the data protection regulator, told Didi to delay their listing because they wanted to investigate them. And Didi proceeded anyway. And the regulators at this point have no power to stop overseas listings. Yes, they can stop local listings like they've done with AND, but they can't stop overseas ones. And Didi is therefore, in my view, the reckless one, or likely to be the reckless one. Uh, the regulator actually isn't. Now, are they out to um, harm Didi or, you know, kill off all of that stuff? No, because the Chinese economy 
Chinese companies, the Chinese government want access to capital markets. They want to receive those funds. They want to get the investment. They want to be able to grow. They want to spread uh, wealth amongst their people, right? Now, if you believe that uh, the China is a communist country, then just just don't buy Chinese stocks. Just stick to Microsoft and PayPal and whatever, uh, Palantir or whatever. Just, just don't get in there. Uh, I think that view is so outdated, and I know the media keeps keeps bashing on about it, but um, communist countries typically do not have multiple stock exchanges, right? So, you know, just, just, just think about this for a moment. No, they are in this to maximize profits, and that's how all these companies are run. There is nothing, no difference here. So the regulators, in my view, are actually really irritated with Didi because Didi, by having done what they have done, listing with a regulatory problem have caused damage to the whole sector of Chinese companies that are listed in the US. And I think it's 174 or something last time I checked, something like that. So it's a lot of them. And they don't want that. So there's actually a draft law now in uh, being circulated where the regulators in the future will have, will require any company that wants to list overseas to run through the compliance locally. So they're going to have to go to the regulator and say, hey, we want to list in New York um, and, and here are our documents. And that makes sense because we as investors in a New York listed company expect that company to comply with local laws. But the US regulators have no real knowledge or ability to know whether they comply with local Chinese laws because they don't know the law and they just can't investigate that, right? So we rely on the companies to tell us that what they're doing is right. And in Didi's case, that faith is perhaps not, not that well placed. So that's, I think, going forward, actually an improvement. Now, that's called a crackdown for some reason, whereas Biden's massive regulation over the whole tech sector or all the... Uh, you know, 37 US states suing Google last week. Now that's a crackdown. That's just sensible government regulation, right? So it's politics. And I think we need, as investors, separate the money from the politics because we are more interested in the money than the politics. Now, let me explain just a little bit what a VIE actually is. So a VIE is a structure that is set up for the following reason. Uh, there are sectors in China where you are not allowed to have foreign investors or 100% foreign shareholders. So you say certain technology sectors, telecommunications, stuff like that. And is that strange and protective? Well, what the legislation the US has put in in the last two years or so is fairly similar, right? There are sectors now in the US where they don't want um, uh, foreign ownership. So it's the same sort of idea. So therefore... Um, the structure is this. You set up two companies. Uh, and let me just sort of draw a little picture here. So what you do is you set up one company here. Uh, and that one's in China. So that's your China Co. Apologies for the handwriting. And then you set up an offshore company. And that offshore company is typically in the Caymans. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's one of those uh, offshore tropical islands. So that's the Cayman Co. And how does this work? Well, it depends a little bit on the industry. But say in Neo's case, indirectly, the Cayman Co. owns the China Co. There will then be another company somewhere here on the structure, or some more, and say this China Co. owns in this company entirely. And then there is another company that they do not own 100%. And that's really the reason for this. So you have this sort of um, contractual relationship here. So you have an agreement here rather than ownership. Right? So this here is 100% share ownership, 100%. This is an agreement. And this is usually a, some sort of tech company. And I'll show you this. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. That was meant to be an E. Um, and the reason they do that is that this tech company up here, this one cannot be foreign owned. So it'll be against the law if it was foreign owned. So they get around it by therefore having a, a nominee that owns this company. So case, in the case of Neo, for example, that could be William Lee. William Lee might own this and William Lee assigns rights into the tech to the China Co. 
and then we as investors sit up here, right? So uh, this is us, yeah? This is us in the US, so the us kind of works, and we own that. That's kind of the simple structure of this, and I'll show you the Neo one just in a second, right? and you can really see how this works. Um, so uh, this is a little bit more of a complicated structure. I don't think we need to go into that. I'll cover that in the, in the course for those of you guys who really want to understand a deep dive into this. Now, what's an ADS? What's an American depository share? Because that's the other term that confuses people. So people think when I buy NEO or Barber or Didi, I buy a share in that company. Um, you don't. You buy an ADS. And an ADS is an American depository share. It's a little bit similar. Uh, it is essentially a... a uh, a share of a non-US company. So there are French companies or Canadian companies or many other companies also listed in the US and they're also ADSs. And those, they are held by a depository bank in the US and you can purchase them. It's basically, this is the definition here, it's a negotiable certificate issued by a US bank under agreement with a foreign company and is evidence of ownership of the ADS. In much of the same way as a stock certificate denotes ownership of equity shares. But can you see the difference? The difference is that this is issued by a US bank under agreement with a foreign company. Now, the foreign company is the Cayman Islands company. So when we buy NEO, we buy an American depository share certificate in the Cayman Island company. Now, you're wondering, uh, what do they actually own? Um... Uh, let me see if you've got any questions here, guys. Um, uh, uh, Dan, uh, CCP, uh, they don't want to destroy their economy. They have absolutely no, no, no interest there. Um, uh, and Fadi is ask, asking about delisting. Okay, Fadi, we'll get to delisting in, in, in just, just a moment. Uh, let me show you, guys. So if you go on my, my Patreon and you click on Neo, uh, then you can get and you scroll literally pretty much all the way down, you'll find the setup of the actual um, of, of, of the actual certificate here. So what I'm going to do, guys, is take a little full screen snip of this so we can, we can uh, zoom in on this a little bit. So this is the Neo system of how it actually works. This is what we own. Now, what do we buy? This is us, right? So up here... Is, uh, is the U.S. shareholder. Sorry, guys. Let me just write shareholder. Shareholder. That's what we invest in. Okay. So we invest in a Cayman Island company. Now, that Cayman Island company, this is obviously fairly complex. I mean, you could, what I just showed you before was a simplified version of this. The Cayman Island company owns loads of stuff, lots of Hong Kong companies. Why? That's for tax reasons. Hong Kong has 15% tax. China has, say, 45% tax. So lots of this stuff is, is run through Hong Kong for, for tax beneficial reasons. Uh, but what you can see is that the Cayman Island company essentially owns Neo Hold Co., and this here is Neo China. And what people typically call Neo China is this company here. So that's the ownership structure. So we actually own Neo China, uh, except for about two and a half percent, which are still owned by the Hefei government since the bailout. Uh, though they are going to have to buy that back. Um, they, I mean, Neo. So do we own Neo? Uh, yes, we do. There is, however, and that's what I was saying, the reason for the VIE structure is the following. So this is basically um, the U.S. shareholder to the NEO company. That's your ADS. So that's what you are owning up here. And then the NEO Cayman company actually owns all the NEO stuff. It also owns NEO USA, NEO Germany, NEO UK, NEO Norway, and all these other companies uh, out there, and then lots of Hong Kong companies uh, that um, are there for, for tax benefit reasons. Now, you see, however, there are two dashed arrows here, right? And this is the whole reason for the for the VIE. So the, the whole VIE reason lies with these two companies. 
And why is that? Because they are technology companies and they will have technology that is not permitted to be 100% owned by foreigners. So that could, for example, be the user data, like what Didi is in trouble for, right? So Neo has an app with, say, I think two or three million actual users. Uh, they, of course, have all the autonomous driving data. They have all the maintenance data, all that stuff. You are not allowed to put that into 100% foreign ownership. Um, and therefore, and then there's also Shanghai Neo New Energy Automobile. Uh, that, to my understanding, is R&D. So they, again, there might be stuff in there that's to do with telecommunication, transferring of data that you cannot have 100% foreign ownership in. So how do you get around that? Well, we as Neo, if you follow the trail, because we own Neo uh, Holdco, we own Neo Co, we own 50% of the Shanghai Neo New Energy company but the other 50 percent we do not own directly that is owned by neo technology co and that's owned by shanghai anbin technology so the question therefore is who owns shanghai and by technology right that's really the question and who owns that uh, well we actually don't know i mean i have not looked it up to be honest with you but there will be some sort of nominee and why is there a nominee and who would it, is it likely to be? It's most likely to be William Lee, uh, because that's typically how this is set up, that he will own nominally these companies and he'll assign the benefit to Neo China, uh, which means that we actually receive the benefit of that. Um, and Neo is actually pretty straightforward. There are some other companies that are a little bit more techy, where uh, you have very little ownership downwards from the Cayman Island company, uh, and where you see that between the Cayman Island company and the Chinese company, it's just agreements, no actual ownership. So the Neo setup is actually pretty good. Um, and what's the risk? So if you believe the um, you know uh, Tom Nash or whoever this is, um, Rabi Sabi, is this in your course? Yes. Um, I, I've added a, a full length, full detailed uh, and structured explanation to this, not just on Neo, but so that you can really understand uh, what you're investing in if you're investing in foreign foreign companies, because it's important. And I saw some of the headlines and people are saying, oh, I, you know, I sold Neo because it's fake stock. I just found out. And it's like, well, did you read the S1? Did you read anything at all when you bought that stock? And that's what I teach you guys also in the course, guys. Okay, look at the, the F1. Right, so this is the um, uh, filing uh, with the SEC, and if you search for a variable interest entity, there are literally 64 mentions of that in the document, and they explain exactly what it is and how it works in in, in a lot of detail, like like a lot of detail. It's it's all over there. So anybody who says, "Oh, this is a surprise," well. I'd recommend that they take my master stocks course because uh, they, they need to uh, understand and do a little bit more research before they buy things, guys. And that is on special coupon offer. And the coupon code is build wealth because I want you guys to build wealth. I don't want you to be running in the dark just because somebody said something. I want you always to check your facts. So check out the links below. Now, um, um and Fadi is saying all Chinese stocks are on sale now. And then, yeah, you, you are sort of right because uh, people are worried about this stuff. Uh, but should they be? Well, nothing has changed. Uh, we as investors own something like 97.5% of Neo China, which owns basically everything except for a bit of tech. Now, you could say that there is a theoretical list a risk that the Chinese government is going to say, well, these sort of slightly gray setups uh, are, are going to be declared unlawful and therefore every single of the 170 or so Chinese companies listed in New York would, um, well, uh, you know, would lose most of their value overnight, we as shareholders. But that would be expropriating shareholders and that would be the end of the Chinese economy. So, I, I think a highly, highly, highly unlikely scenario, especially given that we've been doing these structures since 1994. China Mobile was the first one, and there's never been an issue with it. Um, I mean, there have been issues with all sorts of companies, but never with a structure. So the reason that everyone's talking about this at the moment, it's just it's a slow news week or something. Nothing has actually changed. Nothing has actually happened. Uh, and I, to me, the risk is very remote. Um, I don't really see it from this particular structure. Uh, 
if you are worried about delisting, that has nothing to do with this again. That's a completely separate question, uh, that Trump holding foreign companies accountable act law, uh, which so far isn't being enforced by the SEC at all. So you have at least three years there for that to be a risk. And that's also part of the reason why all these Chinese companies are listing here in Hong Kong. Um, um, FR8, uh, great to have you on here, Dimitris. Uh, thank you. You sent me an email earlier also, which I appreciate. I think that was you. Uh, uh, any thoughts on Ford adopting the battery swap? Well, we, we don't quite know yet, right, whether they will in China. It would be great if they did. Um, why would huge buy banks buy NIO if it were a risky buy, says PG? Makes zero sense. And ATFE, hello there to Felix. Uh, PG is not worried. And look, I mean, somebody literally sent me an email um, yesterday or the day before and I guys, smash that, smash that like button. It's down here somewhere. Um, and they were saying, you know, I, how can I find out institutional ownership of the last few days? Because I'm worried that these banks have just found out that NEO is a is an ADS and it's a VIE and therefore they will have sold it. And I just, you know, I wrote back very politely and said, well, it wouldn't have been a surprise to them because uh, they read the uh, the S1 filing, the, the filing with the SEC, and they've probably read most of the annual reports since. So they, they know that and nothing has changed. So the the fear and the, the panic that media is able to cause amongst investors is quite shocking, I think. Uh, and it's highly irresponsible. And I mean, look, I, I, I do a bit of clickbaiting with my headlines. I, 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 I have to, in a sense. That's not an excuse, but it's just the way the algorithm works, right? Everything is a little bit tabloidy on the headlines, but the content never is. But people who are putting out headlines saying, you know, you've got fake shares and all this stuff, no, you don't. You have an ADS. It's an American depository share. It's issued by a United States bank. And if you don't want to buy foreign companies, no one's forcing you to, right? I mean, there are great American companies and stocks to buy. Just buy those. Uh, there is no nothing fake. There's no scandal. There's no nothing panic worthy here. Um, uh, Fauci, uh, can you name uh, the Chinese companies that are quite safe in terms of structure, similar to Neo? Uh, 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 Fauci, basically the structure is the same for everybody. Um, the more kind of national security type stuff they do, uh, the less ownership will move to the to the offshore entity. So, say if you are buying, I don't know. Uh, gas or oil companies or stuff like that, uh, you are less likely to be an in, in, in indirect shareholder in the actual Chinese entities, and it'll be more of the agreement type basis. Uh, but even that has been doing, I mean, China Mobile did, did okay, right, structure-wise since 1994. I think it was a, a very poorly performing stock, but it's not because of the structure. And why did it get delisted? Well, that had nothing to do with the structure. That just had to do with politics. Um, FR8, uh, is Baba an ADR or a VIE? Um, both. Uh, they, they pretty much all are. Pretty much everything is. Um, you'd need to be in a really kind of vanilla business not to have uh, a, a VIE in there. Um, uh, and PG is saying huge share price predictions. Yes, and I can show you that also. HSBC has just put out a great rating upgrade. Let me just show you that. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So if you, again, if you go on our, pa our Patreon, I'll, I'll show it to you as well. Uh, then if you click on Neo, there are lots and lots of posts. There's loads of other stuff on here as well. And you can join that. It's 50 cents a day, guys, because I want you to be invested in the information and the research. And you're much more likely to be if you're paying a little bit. And 50 cents a day is a, is a reasonable sum. So I've just made the change here, actually. HSBC, uh, they were at $55. Now they're at $69. They were previously at $44. So they're getting rather hot on the on NEO. And our average of all the analyst ratings is now $66, which is a 46% upside. And bear in mind, a lot of these guys downgraded uh, in sort of March, April, when the chip crisis was at, at, at a height, like Deutsche Bank, for example. So I actually think this is going to keep going up. Um, guys, I appreciate more than 200 of you on the chat here. If you want to join the chat, just hit that subscribe button. It gets you straight into it. It's free. And I'd love it if you smash that like button, guys. It would truly make my day. Uh, and I will answer uh, all of your questions uh, to the best of my ability here. Um, uh, Music Mansion says, is there's no problem with, uh, with actually Chinese stocks. It's just a hate campaign. Um, and uh, FR8 is saying, so, okay, the, the confusion here seems to be about uh, ADS versus um, VIE, right? So let me, let me try and explain that. So what's the difference? 
Okay, so the, the ADS is the American, okay, that's, the, that's very much the wrong color pen. Uh, I'm writing in a yellow highlighter. The, the ADS is the American depository share, right? So that is issued by a US bank and it is based on an agreement they have with the offshore entity, so the, say the, the Cayman Island company. So that's that's that structure. So that structure is is, is essentially, uh, you know, uh, a, a a share in an offshore company. Yeah, am I writing underneath myself? Yes, I am. Okay, let me move that. Okay, so that's what the ADS is, a and the rationale there is simply well you can't buy directly shares in Chinese, mainland Chinese companies. The law doesn't really allow it, uh, both in the US and in China. So ADSs are not a Chinese uh, thing. There are lots of, say, Canadian companies listed in the US. Those are ADSs as well. So it's nothing to do with China. The VIE thing is more of a Chinese situation, and that's basically created so that you can invest in companies that do not allow for direct or 100% foreign ownership. So it's it's basically a workaround. Uh, workaround um, for foreign ownership restrictions. Yeah. Uh, excuse my handwriting, guys. Uh, years as a as a lawyer re destroyed my handwriting restrictions. I don't know why it makes some of the characters funny. There seems to be some some sort of feature. So that's the difference between VIEs and ADSs. Now most Chinese companies are both. They're all ADSs. Every foreign company listed in the United States is an ADS. That's everyone, right? And the VIE is the vast majority of them because the vast majority of them have some element of, of stuff that cannot be foreign owned, like user data or some sort of technology, communications, you know, things like that. And quite frankly, the US is moving in the same direction, which is it's, it's kind of um, uh, interesting to note. So that's basically ADSs are all foreign companies, yeah? All foreign co's listed in the US are ADSs. Um, Ruben, much appreciated. AT, if I FUD, yes, it is precisely that. Uh, and FR8, I always smash that like button. Well, thank you very much. Um, and Wing uh, Hong Dicky is, Dicky is asking here, how long will the DD drama last? Okay, we can look at that in a second as well. Um, um, I have not added yet Neo and Palantir. I like to, if you follow me, I like to look at the charts. I like to buy things on the way up rather than on the way down. Um, uh, Alan, uh, yes, our Baba friend is indeed a long suffering. Um, it, it, it is it is a little bit painful here. Dan, appreciate the, the like here. Uh, Neo is hiring in the US. What's the problem? It says PG. Um, and Daniel seems to think that needy drama will last three to five months. Well, if we think, uh, look at the Alibaba drama, that's taken seven months now, right? Pretty much since the antitrust investigation. So uh, you, you do need some patience with this. Um uh, and Alan's cash out on, on, on DD on Friday if I can, I can get in for a better price. And yes, you probably can. Um, uh, and FR8 says Charlie Munger bought the ADS and not the Hong Kong shares. Uh, uh, so, uh, Dickie, you're very kind to offer me a drink. Um, <laughs> cheers to that. So, I think the third issue that we should probably touch upon here is is delisting, right? So that's kind of the the, the third fear people have is delisting. And what are the reasons for delisting? There are basically two. It's either uh, you are some sort of military company, some sort of military connection. So there's that that Trump executive order uh, basically saying, uh, you know, if you, if you are somehow aiding the uh, the Chinese military, uh, you get delisted. And that's 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 how they uh, went after the, the the Chinese telcos. And then the second one is the um, the holding foreign companies accountable act uh, fcaa and that's very different that is all about accounting uh, so that's basically about um, audits 
And that's a fairly short and fairly boring piece of legislation that basically says Chinese companies need to open their books to the US regulators. And Chinese law forbids that, so the Chinese companies are between a rock and a hard place. Um, and what's the solution here? Well, the SEC is sitting on it. So the law, even though it's a Trump piece of legislation, has no deadline in it. So the SEC is not obliged to start enforcing it. And the way it's structured, it's I think there are some smart uh, Wall Street lawyers who kind of interfered in, 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 the, in the drafting of that because it basically says it's, there's a three-year grace period which starts when the SEC identifies the companies that need to comply with it. Now, I could, and you and I could identify those companies in about 30 seconds by Googling uh, every Chinese company listed in the US, uh, but the SEC hasn't identified that. Uh, so we have basically without a, a three-year grace period, which is very, very nice for us. So that three-year grace period starts once they start identifying companies and the SEC at this point are sitting on their hands and saying the last notice they put out was uh, we are investigating how to uh, initiate a process uh, and to put it into place of how to uh, you know identify these companies so they're not doing anything it's quite uh, intentional so that is a political problem that has to be solved on a political level between the US and China um, uh, Rudy, does the HFCAA apply to OTC Chinese stocks like 10 cents? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely everything. Um, they, at the moment, they don't need to file 10 Qs, but if the SEC identifies them, which I think given how big 10 cent is, they, they, they could, uh, they'd still have to open their audits because they are still listed in the US, right? They're just not part of, uh, of, of NASDAQ or something like that. Um, Uh, so Catalan then says, if they get delisted, right. Okay, so that's the this, this theoretical worst case scenario that for some reason the SEC suddenly gets some teeth uh, 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 and um, Wall Street doesn't stop them because Wall Street does not want Chinese companies to be delisted because they make money off that, of that right? Who does the neo uh, bond issues and share issues? Well, it's Goldman Sachs and Citigroup and, you know, uh, JP Morgan and uh, Bank of America. It's like those guys and they make money out of it. So they, they don't want that to stop. Um, now, if a company gets delisted, Again, it depends a little bit on why it's being delisted. So if it gets delisted for the the military reason, which is like the China Unicom, uh, then US investors cannot are not permitted to hold those shares. So you have to sell them. There's no, no other solution. Um, if you got delisted for any other reason, um, say under the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, uh, you could buy Hong Kong shares instead, or you rather you could convert your ADSs to Hong Kong shares. Uh, and that's part of the reason also as a backup why Neo Xpang and pretty much every other Chinese company is listing in, in Hong Kong as a deal listing. It gives them a backup. And I think it actually improves the negotiating position and it makes it more likely that the US and China will find a political solution to this accounting, this audit problem. Because it's a theoretical thing, really, right? Because if you think about the fact that say Neo or Baba are audited by PricewaterhouseCoopers Shanghai, who follow uh, US GAAP, GAAP standards, the fact that they can't show the audit papers to a US auditor or a, a US regulator doesn't make that much of a difference if you think that PricewaterhouseCoopers has standards. Um, so in reality, I think there is very little discrepancy there between the way they're audited. It's just about grandstanding, really. Um, uh, Taco is saying Baba has a very attractive valuation right now. Is it time to get in? Um, it does. It does have a very attractive valuation, and that's why a lot of these uh, big value investors are buying into it. Uh, the only thing you need is patience, and that's what you need for value investing, right? You need a lot of patience, uh, and you have to think about it. What's my opportunity cost? That's what I always say. I think, in fairness, you have to think about that. Say, say if Baba doesn't go up in a, for a year, uh, and your core portfolio goes up say, 12% a year. Um, and if it doesn't, you should take my master stocks course because uh, you're doing something wrong. It should actually go up more than that. So uh, check out those coupons down here below, guys. Uh, build wealth as the coupon and it expires tomorrow. Now, therefore, if your barber doesn't move for a year, in the second year, it would have to do 24% 
just to match your rest of your portfolio. So you, there's an opportunity cost in holding things that are not necessarily performing, right? Um, uh, Blake, uh, a quick uh, TA on Neo. It would be interesting to see outlook in the near term. Absolutely. Uh, glad to do that. And Chris Jones says, I never take a day off. Chris, how's your, how's your COVID? Uh, Chris is one of our lovely members and he is COVID positive. So don't don't comment too closely around his his questions. You might catch something. But no, seriously, Chris, I, I hope you are. I hope you're OK. Um, uh, so let us know that you are recovering nicely. Hopefully you won't even notice it. Okay, let me let me pull Neo up here for you guys, uh, and I'll I'll show you what's going on here with the chat. <clears throat> um, so okay, that's on a four hour basis. Let's get a day basis here. Um, Russ says, "Is Germany a risk? Is Neo ready to compete there?" It's well, Tesla is ready to compete there, right? Germans are buying Teslas made in China. It doesn't seem to stop them. So. Why wouldn't Neo manage to pull the same thing off? All the Teslas pretty much sold in China, in, in, in Germany at the moment, are Chinese made and they are getting away with that. Uh, so why wouldn't um, Neo be able to pull off the same thing? I think there will be some Germans, and I mean, I'm German, who will just say, no, no, I'll only ever buy my BMW or my Mercedes or whatever brand that they like, like to buy. But there'll be plenty of others who also look for value and they'll be like, this is a great car. It's got great reviews and there's tons of it in the German press already. And actually the price point is more attractive than um, the BMW, Mercedes, Audi competitors. And so they're going to give it a shot, right? I, I, I think they will. I think they'll do quite well there. Um, uh, Krishna, uh, I'm very glad you are joining. Um, uh, I'm very glad you guys smashing that like button. I appreciate it. And Chris is feeling all right, just a little bit bored, Chris. Well, you can uh, dig deeper into the Master Stocks course because I know you're on it. Um, Alex, okay, we can get on to Xiaomi in just a second. Um, let's just go ahead, a quick look here at Neo because you guys are asking for it. So we have a, well, yesterday we had, well, yesterday. Friday? Yesterday was Friday, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, you know, down 0.15%, uh, which it really isn't isn't too bad at all. And uh, we had a, a higher low. So you see the bottom of that candle there is substantially higher than the low of the previous day. So in a way, it is part of an upward movement, even though it's a fraction down. Uh, the volume also was substantially less than the day before, uh, which uh, was, well, so the sell-off momentum is is fizzling off here. And that's positive, and that's what we like to see. Let's have a quick look here at the actual numbers of shares bought and sold. So you can see there was a little bit of a spike here at $45, where some people were taking profits, I imagine, or just jumping out in, in frustration or panic, perhaps. Uh, but actually, there's not that much selling below that. It sort of fizzles out below $45. Uh, you know, that's across the whole range here. So the orange is sell-offs, the blue is, is buy-ins. But then we also get substantial buy-ins around $45 and even more so up here in the 50s. So um, I, I'm not too worried about uh, Neo falling off a cliff here. Um, uh, August is saying, nice chart. Well, you know, the other thing is when you get these, these rallies, when you sort of, you know, go up in a straight line, you actually don't want that. You... You want the kinks, you want these, uh, and you want lots of these because each time you have a new low like that in one of these kinks, you actually um, build some support. Uh, you can't see the chat, guys. Apologies. Um, <laughs> right, Messi. Uh, I, I do that sometimes. I, I like looking at my reflection, guys. I can't help it. No, just kidding. Okay, let me let me let me start a, a little bit back here. Then, sorry, guys. So. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And okay, first point was the following, that the low of yesterday, so the bottom of that red candle I'm pointing at here with, with my mouse, is higher, substantially higher than the previous day. So it's, it's a higher low, which is, is a good thing. Uh, and actually, we also had a higher high. So that is actually an upward momentum in a sense, uh, even though we are down 0.15%. And then we are down a little bit, but again, our volume is falling off here. So less volume on the negative day is a positive if you are long on the stock. So I actually think this is a fairly positive movement in the right direction. So if you connected the two low points here, you know, you're you are getting an upward trajectory, right? And if you do the same with the two high points, uh, you get you get that sort of a, 
positive direction upwards here. So that's good. Uh, and then what I wanted to show you guys, if you if we sort of push and watch just the sell-off, just that downward trajectory. And then here on the right, you can see in blue, these little blue bars are the buy-ins and the orange or the golden color is the sell-off volume. So you can see there is a fair bit of sell-off around $45. Uh, and that's probably just a bit of panic fear. And then there's also quite a bit of blue behind that NEO sign there and a little bit, very little trading between 45 and 49. And then 50 upwards, quite substantial buy-in volume here. So I don't think that NEO shareholders are going to be completely panicked by this. Uh, I think we've kind of been through that. There might be a little bit more, but I think people, most people, I think, appreciate what they're buying here. Um, uh, Krishna is saying there's some Elliott Waves graphs for NEO showing a dip for $33 before nice bounce. I, I would be very surprised if we go that low. Um, one reason is also that you see that blue line here, that's the 100-day moving average line that's been guiding us up quite nicely. Uh, I think the fact that we are likely to get very good numbers for July deliveries, August deliveries, September deliveries. Okay. Xpang are forecasting 10,000 deliveries for September. So if Xpang can do that, what's NEO going to do? Is it going to be like 13,000, 15,000 cars in September? You think that people are not going to be excited by that? I think they will be. And then we're going to head into you know, fourth quarter, which is the biggest car buying quarter of the year. So I, I actually think that the real world market news is going to be on the side of the EV companies here. Um, uh, August, no, I, I appreciate there that I wasn't sharing my my screen. Thank you very much there for allowing me that. If you buy the puts, you're betting on Palantir to fail. Um, well, no, not really, Martha. Uh, that isn't actually what puts do necessarily. So if you... Uh, are you bought puts? Okay, okay. I, I sell puts. I never really buy puts. Okay. What I would suggest or what I... To, to told suggested uh, to do and I, uh, when we are selling off uh, is you can sell puts you get income up front and then unless you drop below that strike price you get to keep the money so that's kind of a a, a good way of uh, of buying some things um easier there martha i'd love to know your thoughts on the vie structure for the chinese companies okay let's let's do a quick um um Let's do a quick recap on that, uh, Martha. I appreciate you asking that because that is indeed the title of this um, this video. So uh, I, I apologies for my 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 scribbles here in handwriting. Okay, let me do a, re a quick quick recap. So what have we got? What's all this fear about? So every foreign company listed in the United States, whether it's Canadian or Mexican or French or German or whatever or Chinese, is an ADS. Uh, other way, you can't list any other way. So all foreign companies listed in the United States are, are ADSs. And an ADS is an American depository share. And it is issued by a bank, typically a United States bank, in agreement with the underlying company. And that company is typically offshore. So say in the case of NEO, that's a Cayman Island company, right? So that's how you buy that share. Your share is issued by a bank, uh, not directly by the company. Um, that ADS, so that, say that Cayman Island company then, let me find some empty space here. So let me get a pen. So you have you up here, yeah, that's you. And you buy an ADS that is issued by a U.S. bank. Yeah, So that's what you are buying here. And that ADS is basically the offshore company typically. So in the case of NEO, it's a Cayman Island company. So that's, this is kind of Cayman NEO uh, or you know whatever you want to call it. So let's call that Cayman NEO nice tropical uh, offshore tax haven Cayman Neo. And what does Cayman Neo own? Well, Cayman Neo owns about 97.5% about 
of Neo China. Uh, and you're going to ask me who owns the other two and a half percent. Uh, there is the Hefei government. As part of the bailout, they still own a little bit of NEO, uh, and that's about 2.5%. Now, in that bailout agreement, NEO has to buy them out. Uh, they have to buy that back, or they have to list in China so that Hefei get their money back. Uh, and what have they done with the money so far that NEO has bought it back from? Well, they're building NEO Park with it, right? So they're giving it straight back to the company. Um, now, so this is the ADS structure, and that's pretty standard. That's pretty typical. Uh, these have been around. This is your ADS. Uh, this has been around since. Sorry, guys, my writing is getting worse. This has been around since 1994, uh, when China Unicom first listed. So it's not a new thing. There's never been an issue with this, to my knowledge, uh, with if any of these companies with the actual structure. So. Why is it set up like that? Because you can't, by law, list directly a, a mainland Chinese company in, 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 in New York. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Um, now, so this is the ADS, right? So then what's the VIE all about? So let me get a different pen. That might be the easier way of doing it. So what's the VIE? So the VIE is a strange name. It's, you know, lawyers come up with these things, and I, I used to be one for which I apologize profusely. So a VIE, Variable Interest Entity, why is that in existence? Okay, there are industries in China that are do not permit 100% or maybe more than 50% foreign ownership. So telecommunications, for example, certain technology sectors, uh, things that hold Chinese user data, stuff like that, which is kind of what the United States government is sort of moving towards. So what happens therefore? Well, those companies, so there is there is a in fact there are there are two such companies, but let's just for for, for simplicity uh, call it uh, Neotech, okay, uh, and that's a bit of technology and and a bit of R and D, uh, and that company is not owned directly by Neo China. What they have is an agreement whereby Neotech R and D passes their or licenses their technology to Neo China so they can use it. Um, but Neo is actually owned, um, Neo Tech is owned by some sort of nominee. Uh, and I, I, I don't actually know who that is, but my best guess would be that it's William Lee um, or perhaps a, a, a couple of people. And they will hold Neo Tech for the benefit of Neo China. And it just means that there is a separation here, right? So there is a break here between the foreign ownership trickling down through the Cayman Island Company, through Neo China, because this part of the business we cannot own legally as foreigners. And that's all the VIE is. And that's also been around forever. Uh, Alibaba is a VIE, um, so that's been listed for quite some time. And most Chinese companies have some sort of VIE structure to them. So what's your risk? Well, your risk would be that this structure, which is a little bit gray in terms of Chinese law, although there are some 170 companies using it, if the Chinese company went in and just said, no, you can't be doing this and removed this and stripped this out, it would remove value from the uh, New York shares. Now, if they did that, they'd undermine all trust and faith in all Chinese companies and they'd destroy the golden goose and they'd lose access to capital markets. Uh, it would be an idiotic thing to do. It'd be a moronic thing to do. And the Chinese government are pretty smart. They have a five-year economic plan uh, always. They intend on being the world leader in the EV sector. And NEO is a key part to that. So they're not going to destroy NEO for no particular reason. No one has any interest in spiting New York shareholders. Uh, so no, this makes no sense. And I don't think there is a risk there. Um, in fact, the draft legislation they're coming out with, which essentially says that Chinese companies that want to list in the US are going to have to go through a clearing process in China. That actually strengthens the systems because it inadvertently says we are okay with the system because we're not changing it, right? Um, and Jürgen, is the government fine with such an ownership structure? It's It's been tolerated for 20 years. 
Um, two so this is known as the the uh, Sina structure because in in 2000 they listed uh, and and since then the structure everybody's been using it so yes it is 100% tolerated and they are very very much aware of it and they haven't done anything about it and nor are they likely to because if they did uh, why would they want to destroy their companies like what would be the advantage here um um uh, uh, Johnny is saying, do you think Neo is going to get delisted? No, I don't. Um, uh, so he he man says Tom Nash is is, is rambling for clicks. Um, well, I mean, I, I I don't blame him. Look, if you don't like these structures, if you don't like this extra risk, just buy China, buy buy U.S. shares. It's a very simple choice. No one's forcing anybody, and this stuff is not hidden, right? This is declared uh, again and again and again in in all. Look, this is the form F one of NEO and 64 times it mentions variable interest entity and it explains exactly how it works, it explains what the risk is and it mentions it again and again and again and again. This is not a surprise to anyone who does their research. Um, speaking of research, guys, I highly recommend you do yours and I really teach you and guide you through that uh, down in the master stocks course here uh, I, I show you everything you need to know about this vie structures and everything else uh, so uh, check that out guys if you want to learn technical analysis uh, how you want to learn how to make your discounted cash flow models uh, and how to really build a successful uh, long-lasting strategy for building wealth with stock investing check that out guys um, much appreciate your questions guys and you I truly appreciate everybody who's smashing that like button guys for the algorithm let's let's uh, defut some of that panic that uh, some youtubers are putting out there just to get some clicks guys uh, so um I would appreciate if you click the like button because then those guys are going to get suggested this video and it might just take the fear out of their sales a little bit here right um uh, Jürgen says, my concern was that Didi had a problem by issuing stocks outside the US, but this is a different story. No, Jürgen, that's exactly the same story. Uh, so the the um, Didi story is that they went ahead with their listing, but the regulator had told them, hey, we want to look in your, into your data protection, your privacy protection. And, uh, you know, uh, Jürgen, by your first name, you might you might be of Germanic origin like me, uh, and you might understand data protection. It, it's a big deal because they know where everybody's driving. They know a lot of things they're buying. They know where they're stopping, where they're parking. They know where they live. They know where they're charging. They know a lot about them. Uh, so, uh, and not charging, I was thinking about Neo here, but Didi, you know, Didi also delivers groceries and, and other things. So they really have a lot of information on, on users there. And they are uh, apparently in, in flagrant breach of Chinese data protection laws. So they ignored the warning and the request to delay the IPO and they simply went ahead. And that's not a smart move, I would say. I think that's a pretty uh, dumb move if that is indeed the, the, the case. And that's the problem. That's what got kicked off here. And now the media has taken that and sp spewing it into VIEs and ADSs and it's just confusing people with concepts that have been around for over 20 years or almost 30 years with the ADS concept and applies to every Canadian company listed in New York, for example. And they're just causing confusion and they're just you know, freaking people out and making people lose money and sell things. And really, it's not a very um, sensible uh, plan here. Um, uh, Cyrus, um, thank you for that kind comment. I also noticed, Cyrus, you just joined the Patreon. Uh, welcome to that community here. I uh, appreciate that. And Brock, yeah, it, it, it looks very much like it's Didi's fault. And, you know, when... Facebook is dragged in front of some regulator or Google or something. We don't all freak out, right? Maybe the stock price goes down a percent, but not not all U.S. tech stocks lose uh, ten percent of their value. So this is just panic. Um, uh, Jürgen, <laughs> you're very welcome there. Uh, he says Danke in German. Um, Alex is talking about Xiaomi's car plans. Uh, the rumors are that it's a little bit delayed, perhaps. I don't think we're going to see a car there till 2023 or 2024 at the earliest. Um, because building cars, it's a challenge. It's not something you can do uh, very quickly or very easily. So actually, it's, it's also part of the reason, I think, why NEO has rallied before this little bit of panic because people are starting to realize the competition isn't going to be as quick as people think. Uh, Brock is another one of our uh, Germans here. So we're we being taken over. The Germans are here. They're taking over this channel, guys. Uh, smash that like and subscribe button uh, and um, 
also do it before the earnings season because in in about you know 12th or something of is it the 12th of august uh, a lot of the uh, early mid august a lot of the earnings calls are going to happen guys and there are essential uh, viewing and listening so make sure you join us for that. And for that, you best turn on the little alert belts. Uh, otherwise, you might miss them. So let me do a quick recap here on just where we are with this. So ADSs is the structure that every foreign company has that lists in the United States. It's nothing new. It's nothing scary. It's just the usual thing. And that's been around since 1994. Um, and the way that works is that a U.S. bank issues an American depository share. That's what ADS stands for. It sounds a little bit less scary, doesn't it, when you make the A American? And uh, then you have an, an indirect ownership of the underlying company, whether that's in China or in, in Canada or wherever it is. Um, the VIE is specifically created. It's a structure come up by lawyers. And the first time they came up with that was in 2000. Uh, so it's, again, a pretty old structure that hasn't had any issues. Uh, and the reason they come up with that is because there are certain sectors in China that you companies that foreigners cannot own outright or more than 50% at least. So sensitive technological stuff, um, communication, user data, things like that. So for NEO, for example, uh, we have essentially two or three NEO tech companies, including the Shanghai R&D company. Uh, that is this sort of red thing down here. And that is not owned directly by NEO China, which is owned by the Cayman Island companies that we invest in as NEO shareholders. Uh, and they have an agreement between those two, a contractual agreement, whereas the what I call here NEO tech and R&D basically pass their tech and their knowledge and the benefits of what they do to NEO China for its usage. And again, that structure, as I say, it's been around for now 21 years without a hiccup. Uh, and that's just the way it is. So it's nothing, I don't think it's anything scary. I think it, there's a theoretical list that you could say that those contracts down here could be unenforceable in China. Um, if the government interfered with that, well, it would be a change of policy after 21 years. And if they did that, they'd hurt very severely every single one of their 170 plus companies listed in New York. So why would they do that? It would be uh, be a suicide mission, right? So they're not going to do that because they want their companies to succeed. They want access to, to capital markets, to cheap capital, uh, and they want to be the leader in the EV sector, right? The global number one. That's the plan. That's the government's plan. That's why they're supporting uh, the EV sector, in, like, like NEO and other companies. So uh, they are not... Um, you know, they're pretty sane people. They have a five-year industrial plan. So uh, I, I, I don't see them going against their, their policies uh, for, for kind of pointless reasons. Uh, Tom, yes, I did call. And hang on, Tom, hang on, Tom. W watch out for this one here. There we go. Tom Nash is here, guys. Uh, you see, we made a little... I, I said, Tom, I would make a little... Um, bit of excitement next time you join the call. And there he is. Uh, so, Tom, you did put a video out earlier, which I think, uh, well, you know, you said China is over and that sort of thing. We should all sell our Chinese shares. Uh, and I was explaining here and calming people down uh, and explaining the structures, both the ADS structure and the VIE structure. Uh, the, the ADS structure has been around since 1994 for Chinese companies. And every foreign company uses that, including, you know, Canadians and European companies, no issue ever with that structure. Uh, and then the VIE structure is a particular to China indeed. It basically gets around the prohibition of foreigners owning certain companies. Uh, so with NEO, we have some of the NEO tech and R&D stuff, uh, which isn't owned by NEO China, but there is just an agreement between the two. So what I've circled down here in green. Uh, so the benefits of that research go to NEO China. Uh, now, I appreciate what you're saying, Tom, that there is a theoretical risk that that contract could be voided or could not be enforceable. However, if the Chinese government were to do that, uh, they, would be, um, they would be cutting their own risks, really. Um, uh, so Tom is saying that the new, there's a new regulator in China. There is. So there is this, um, essentially, it's a data protection regulator. It's not really new, but it's kind of only recently found its teeth. And they are getting concerned about data protection. So they've been looking into that quite a lot. And they told Didi before the listing, 
delay your listing because we need to look into your um, the way you're handling your user data because DD has masses of user data. Ninety percent of all Chinese people of the of the all the the car sharing market uh, is 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 held by DD. Plus they deliver groceries and lots of other things. So they have an enormous amount of data on ch what Chinese people are doing, where they're living, where they're eating, you know, where they're moving around, where they're working, all that sort of stuff. And the way they are handling that data is in breach of existing pre-existing laws. Now, the regulator found that out after the IPO, which Didi went ahead with, despite the regulator asking them not to. So from my view, Tom, and I, I appreciate you, you can disagree with it, uh, that the, the fault here seems to lie with Didi, or possibly SoftBank or whoever uh, ultimately controls Didi. They pushed ahead with an IPO, which has now damaged the whole sphere of Chinese stocks. And that to me is the irrationality here because um, you know Google got sued by 37 US states last week, right? Um, there is a tech crackdown, if I can borrow that silly term, by, by the Biden administration on the whole tech sector. And so none of those things caused the market to move, right? But this seems to, and then the media throws in ADSs and variable inter interest uh, entities into the mix to confuse everybody, which is super old news, right? It's like 20 year old news. So, um, um, Tom said, "I didn't say I didn't say sell anything. I think the structure is trash, and now that the regulator is in, it's a massive risk to investors. I'm not touching it with a stick." And Tom totally appreciate that. And I think if people don't want to buy Chinese stocks, they don't have to. No one's forcing them. Um, you can there are plenty of great American companies you can in, in, invest in. Um, to me, the risk is highly remote because. Being living here in China, uh, I see that the Chinese government is interested in one thing, and that is the commercial success of their companies. So even the way the whole Baba saga was, was portrayed, it never had anything to do with trying to put Alibaba down. It was just one company getting, uh, well, ignoring all regulations and running basically the world's largest bank with you know about 1% deposits. And no regulator really likes that. Now, you could fault the regulator and say, hey, guys, you should have known this 10 years ago, and that's true, but they've had such a light-touch regulation as a no regulation for all the tech giants over the last 10, 15 years. Like, there hasn't been a single antitrust investigation into a tech company, into an internet company, uh, for the previous 10 years before Alibaba, right? So the regulator is basically catching up with the reality of this uh, tech business that they have uh, allowed to create. Um, uh, and Tom is saying the risk is much more than theoretical. Um, okay, they are indicated VIE is abusive. So from here on, it's um, the VIE was around for 20 years because it was not looked at by the Chinese regulators. Now it's changing, he's saying. The one thing they value more than business success is control, uh, he says, says Felix. Tom, look, I, I appreciate everybody has a point of view. Um, the draft legislation that has just been circulated this morning basically says if you are a Chinese company and you want to list in New York, you're going to have to go through a Chinese regulator first. So you're going to get basically audited by the Chinese regulators to make sure you comply with Chinese laws. As an investor into Chinese companies, I, I welcome that because if a company lists in New York like Didi, I assume that they comply with local legislation in the US, in, in China. But the US regulator has no way of finding that out, right? So we are basically relying here on the word of that company. Now, if it comes with a certificate from the Chinese regulator that everything is, uh, you know, triple A uh, in place, I would much prefer that. And to me, that move endorses the VIE structure because they're not saying we are changing anything to structure. We're not saying we're going to stop people from listing overseas. They're not saying we don't like the way it's structured. They're just saying you need to comply with you, Chinese regulation before you list. Because if you list and then we find out that you didn't, it's embarrassing. It's a loss of face, right? And that's a big deal also. And it damages the whole Chinese sector. And China is interested in one thing and one thing only, and that's uh, making its businesses bigger, making its economy bigger, and making the people wealthier. Uh, and that's really why they have their five-year economic plan. Um, 
Uh, and Tom is saying, I think Barber is a great company, but I'm not investing due to the regulatory uncertainty. Um, look, Tom, I appreciate that. I think everybody can have that view, and I think it's totally fair enough. Uh, some people, are, you know, come on my chat and say, "Hey, I'm worried about delisting and stuff," and you know, it really stresses me out. And I say to them, "Well, just." sell the shares like sleep better that's that's the whole point right the point of investing is to build wealth and a calm mind right and i wake up every morning i'm excited about my, my portfolio up down i don't care i know it's gonna compound to a fantastic sum over time and i keep adding to it in a structured way and that's what i what i teach my students on the courses so that's the point. And if something freaks you out and, and stresses you out, just, just don't do it. It's very simple. There are lots of choices out there. No one's forcing anybody. But uh, I think it's important that people understand the structures. Uh, I think it's important people understand the history of the structure. And then their take on the politics is, a, is, a, is going to be a personal one, right? Uh, but the way the U.S. media portrays everything, they always say, oh, it's the Communist Chinese Party and all the stuff. that they And that sort of is this kind of borrowing the, um, I mean, you know, uh, Tom, you're, you're Russian, right, by, by origin. Uh, it's borrowing that Cold War era uh, sort of negativity and, and slapping it on China. And um, there is nothing communist about China, right? Nothing at all. Uh, socialist, yes, but the U.S. is socialist, Europe is socialist, every single country in the world is socialist. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't have social security, right? So, uh, I, I think it's the, the political overtones that I find irritating in financial reporting uh, because it doesn't really belong there and it freaks people out. I mean, see the reaction that, you know, CNBC and Kramer and people like that have had on Chinese stocks. You get 10, 15 percent movements when nothing's changed in the underlying business. Nothing at all. Right. And the regulators haven't said anything that would cause them to change anything. But anyway, uh, Tom, I truly appreciate you joining in. Um, I, it's, you know, Tom is great because you can actually have a conversation with Tom. You can disagree with him and he's just going to say, OK, that's your view. This is my view. This is why I have it. I understand why you have it. And we can disagree about it. And that's the civil way of going about it. And it makes us, us, us smarter. And that's why I value our investment community, because we can disagree with one another. Right, it, it's not a, a one th um, belief is is all, and I, I never tell you guys buy this, do that. I just sort of give you information, and it's obviously my point of view, and I always tell you to um, do your own research. Uh, that's really the whole reason I'm doing the courses and the whole Goat Academy. Uh, which, if you aren't over there yet, guys, the links is below. Goatacademy.org. Lots of great inf free information over there as well, um, and if you are more serious about your investment if you want to build wealth and you want to really make a difference to your portfolio and understand what you're investing in. Uh, I highly recommend both of the courses down here, um, the Master Stocks and the Options Trading course, uh, and both have an option, a, a coupon code which expires at the end of Sunday. Uh, that's in New York time, end of Sunday, and the coupon code is Build Wealth, guys, because that's what I want you to do, and I want to help you to get there. So check that out, guys. And um, let me just see if there are any uh, questions here. Um, and uh, let me see if there is anything, uh, see if I managed to offend some people. You don't really achieve anything unless you offend somebody, I find. Um, uh, Andrew wants us to do a live chat with Tom. Uh, well, you'll have to ask Tom. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely game. Um, we should do a call. Okay. Um, uh, plus one for a Tom and Felix live. Okay, you guys, you appreciate, uh, appreciate you enjoy the, the chat we are having here. Um, uh, and Alex said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, communism never really achieved anything. Um, yeah, the word crackdown, it should be banned. I think there should be certain words that should be illegal for like 30 days. They should do a timeout on the world, on the word um, crackdown. Also, the war on dot, dot, dot. Also, timeout for at least a month. Um, Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, the crass talk is value. You'll appreciate that. Um, uh, get into the future. Says buy the dip on Barber or sell as Sunshine. And look, it depends on on your time horizon, Sunshine. I think we have to see the reality that it's been seven months and Barber has not moved. Well, it's moved down since the antitrust investigation opened and closed. And nothing's really happened. So uh, your time horizon needs to be pretty long, and you need to look at your opportunity cost there. Because if I hold something that doesn't move. I'm losing the opportunity to hold something that does move, right? So it's just, you know, there is that that that, that sort of argument there. So uh, it really depends. But I mean, 
look at the metrics, look at the valuations. I, they, they do look fantastic. But I, I'd always just want to be fair and show both sides of the story. Yes, I think it's a great company. I love the numbers. I love the business. But on the flip side, um, it hasn't moved in seven months. So there's no guarantee it's going to move in the next seven. Uh, he man says, buy Barber. Um, uh, uh, cool, I cannot take the stress of Barber. It's a good company, though. And and cool, I think that's a totally fair thing to do. Uh, we don't have to be sort of religious about our stocks. If there's something that stresses us out, uh, I would generally s recommend selling it because sleep is important. If you sleep better, you get better ideas. Uh, you can, you know, you make better business. You create more money, and more opportunities will come your way. Um. Um. George says that yes, the Biden uh, crackdown on the tech giants. I mean, I mean, I, I think we should stop using that word "crackdown" in both directions. Of course, uh, that is just silly. Um, uh, Peter Pan says, "I love your screen name, Peter Pan." Do you think tech stocks will consolidate for a few more days until they rocket? Um, I think we are in for a little bit more volatility here. That will be my view. Uh, but we let's let's see what happens on Monday morning. Um, uh, Blake, thank you very much for your kind words. I appreciate you joining the course and uh, I appreciate you finding it insightful. I see all your comments, Blake. Uh, I truly appreciate those two. Um, and uh, I also appreciate you being very active in our private chat group because our courses, of course, come with uh, private chat groups where you can talk to like-minded investors and, of course, myself. Uh, so... Um, uh, you're crushing these live videos, so see, Himan, I appreciate that, guys. I appreciate you all smashing that like button. That would really make my day, and it would counteract some of the panic and fear that other YouTubers are putting out about ADSs and VIEs. Because uh, it's really easy to cause fear and panic, right? I am tempted sometimes, because the algorithm likes it. The algorithm loves negative content, but I don't really like freaking people out. I really don't like it when people are like, oh my god, I got scared by that. It's not really the intention here. Um, uh, and Tom says, we can't believe maybe an intro, man. Well, here, here, here it is again. Tom is back. So look, here's the intro. <laughs> um, uh, Tom, I, I appreciate you joining the lives and I appreciate you having a completely opposite opinion to mine and, and we can still have a, a sensible conversation about it. And I think that's sort of the point of, um, of, of our channels, really. I think the point is to spread information and I appreciate that you actually, you cover a lot of stocks and I know the algorithm doesn't always love it when we cover different stocks. Uh, so... I appreciate your, that you are brave when you do a Facebook video. Like I did a DD video yesterday, for example, like a thousand people watched it. I thought it was really interesting and good, but the algorithm is just like, nah, that's not, that's not Neo, that's not Palantir, that's not Alibaba. Go back in your corner. Uh, so I appreciate uh, Tom um, uh, doing that. Uh, and we can debate uh, absolutely. And I think it makes us smarter. It makes us better. And I think for the audience, actually, it's helpful to get two genuinely opposing opinions. Uh, whereas, you know, and then we always agree on everything. It kind of gets boring. So um, I hope, guys, you have understood a little bit here from a history point of view and how from a legal structure point of view, how the ADSs work and that they are American depository shares. That makes them sound a lot less scary, doesn't it? CNBC doesn't call them that. And the VIE is a strange little structure. It is indeed as lawyers that came up with it, but it fixes a particular problem and there's a reason for that. And again, that's been around since 2000. Um, and Tom wants his own music. I thought about that actually. Yes, we do need to add some music to that. But then I needed to, I need to to play with the um, the, the levels of the music. Well, we'll do that. Any favorite tracks, Tom? The other thing is it has to be license free because you know how YouTube is with music. So, you guys, when you you know when I cover like a a four hour neo day, right? And there is a three second clip on a little little commercial that that neo put in you get demonetized for the whole thing. It's the most irritating thing. So YouTubers are afraid of music. Uh, we really are. Um, uh, Susan says, get together and do this again with this thing progresses. Um, civil debate is better for everyone. Uh, will market will test lows again soon. You need to plan to be prepared. Bottom line, buy and hold Neo, says Yuki. Uh, right, guys, I truly appreciate you all joining in. Uh, Tom, thank you very much. Our super guest star here. I appreciate you dropping into our little channel. And uh, guys, uh, remember the uh, coupon expires tomorrow, the end of the day, Sunday. Uh, I will do a live tomorrow evening, uh, but otherwise I am recording lectures all day tomorrow. Uh, I'm aiming to do about 15 if I can. That's a little ambitious, but I'm aiming to. Uh, I, I'm, I'm expanding the options course like absolute mad. Uh, 100 plus lectures is the goal there, guys. Uh, so 
I pretty appreciate you guys joining in. Have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Uh, Tom, same to you. And uh, I'm out.